Mm -hmm. Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Uh, right today I've got my laptop out, I'm going to do um, a build along video, um, I'm going to build my space walls, um, I say build them, I'm going to prepare them uh, ready for painting um, and I uh, thought I'd have a chit chat um, as part of my uh, build with series of videos. So uh, I'm just going to go table down and uh, we'll have a look at um, what I'm going to be doing and have a little chat. So I'll just get my little cutting board out. So yeah, I've got my long fangs and um, I'm basically preparing them. Um, I'm going to take them off of their bases, drill out the holes and stuff and uh, just get them ready for uh, priming basically. So uh, the first job of the day is going to be to take the bases off, um, which Usually I can just pull them off or at least uh, partially pull them off and then cut them off but um, yeah I'll just take my time basically and as I'm doing so we'll have a little chat like I said. So um, today is the day before the tournament. Now this is video, this video is probably going to go up um, I'd imagine after the tournament report probably even. So, um, But yeah when I'm recording this the tournament is tomorrow. Um, so I've been spending the day today uh, preparing for the event. So um, I, I am really looking forward to it, I have to say. I am very excited. Um, I am nervous as well, but um, I, I'm not really worried about anything. But um, obviously it's a new experience, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different. I think my uh, biggest downfall... Um, as such is going to be my lack of um, experience with playing some of the, the other armies uh, so you know for example say Admech you know I've, I'm an ace is taking Admech um, I've never played Admech I don't really know too much about them I think that probably be my biggest downfall I'm going to have a good experience with, with a lot of armies um, but only the ones in my gaming group or the ones that I play so um, excuse me, I'm pretty au fait with Space Marines, I'll probably take on any pretty much fraction of Space Marines or probably even Chaos Space Marines um, and obviously lots of the Xenos armies um, I'm quite familiar with um, but some of those oddball ones, maybe some formations and stuff that I'm not really going to have much of a clue about potentially could be my downfall but hey ho, you know, I'm going for the experience anyway so um, I am looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's the first one off of its base. Uh, let's get another one out. So what sometimes happens with these when I take them off, where I've um, obviously I made these a long time ago, uh, ten over 10 years ago, um, and where I've used Chaos and Space Marine parts and uh, in some cases just glued them on rather than pinning them. When I take the base off, sometimes the legs and stuff come apart, so... You know, I am prepared for that if that happens. I've got to be a little bit careful with this one. It's got a wolf pelt dangling down and I don't want to um, break that off. Although this one is a little bit loose, so I need to sort that out, which I will sort out um, at some point in this video. So I'm going to make... I've got a few things planned for today, actually. I'm going to make um, a video entry to uh, Pete uh, from Mini Warzone because he's got little basically a little giveaway at the moment on his channel he's giving away one of those games workshop uh, mold line removers which he seems to think works really well um, not for all mold lines but for a good chunk of them um, and I've you know I'm quite interested to actually try one of those so it'd be pretty cool if I could win one of those so I'm going to do a video entry for him later today uh, well you won't see it for a good few days probably uh, from when I'm making the video but you know I've also got what else I'm gonna have my hair cut today as well so I've got quite a few thing, things planned for today there we go so I'm just cleaning up the base at uh, the feet uh, the the base the base of the feet <laughs> because um, obviously where they've been glued down they've got bits of the base in like black stuff so I'm just tidying them up getting them ready for uh, re-gluing I'll uh, put some pins in these feet as well today 
I had these uh, space walls on my desk <laughs> for the whole of the War Boss Tape painting challenge because I planned to make this video ages ago actually um, but those dark out I just took too much time and uh, really nice feeling to, to get those done I'm really happy with the results I um, got, a, <laughs> got a number of dislikes on my showcase video um, I mean yeah I always get a few dislikes here and there um, having said that the last month um, I haven't got many dislikes on my videos um, but um, at one stage I was getting at least two or three dislikes for whatever reason and I think the reason why I was getting a few dislikes on my showcase video was um, people weren't particularly uh, well I think I'm only guessing because as usual dislikers don't leave comments um, but I think it's something to do with the fact that it was a £25 army challenge and, and basically I got a load of my models for free um, and I don't think people some people agreed with it or thought it was fair or whatever but I already had a chat with Callum from Tabletop Banter who set the challenge um, and he said you know there's no there's no fixed fixed rules you know do what you want I mean at the end of the day it's my challenge and I still spent £50 and you know that was my result so yeah I got some free but you know so what that's the way I see it but I can understand what people where people are coming from but there you go that's life isn't it so the dislikes don't really bother me because I know that YouTube counts dislikes and likes exactly the same way as far as they're concerned they're the same thing so those dislikes actually help me <laughs> so yeah I'm really really looking forward to uh, painting these guys up actually so they <laughs> talking about me to, well not talking about looking at me with my knife here um, and it reminded me of Commissar Gams's video that he recently put up about using knives because I'm sure that probably on this video, assuming you can see my knife action, let's move this a bit, um, it looks like I'm really, really unsafe with this knife, but actually I've got full control with this knife, um, and that's basically what Comsa Gams' video is about. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen that video, it's actually quite interesting, and it's quite amazing how sort of I do what basically he's talking about just naturally. And it, although it does look really unsafe, it's probably a lot safer than trying to do it like this, you know, and trying to do it without actually cutting yourself. So, some holidays, I think about halfway through at the moment. Um, yeah, obviously, I've had a few extra days off to help look after my daughter while my wife's away. Um, keeping the, the children entertained is uh, always fun. Notice YouTube's been a little bit more, a little bit more quieter uh, during the summer holidays. It always tends to be where people are just too busy to upload videos or to watch videos. I've got my. Uh, 5,000 subscriber video up and running at the moment which uh, I've had a good number of responses uh, to um, a lot of um, I suppose you could say smaller channels I haven't had much response from some of the bigger channels which is a bit disappointing I suppose um, because obviously those are the ones that ultimately help my channel out because obviously you know, if, if a big channel does a shout out, you know, there's more chance of a few subscribers coming over. But um, I think it's more the time of year more than anything. But that's okay because I, I I'm not doing the giveaway for subscribers. I mean, I, I'm obviously having extra subscribers is useful and nice. But ultimately, I'm doing the giveaway because I want to give something back to the community. Um, I'm using my. AdSense funds, the, the advertising um, for my half of the prize 
and obviously you can have War Games sponsoring the other half of the prize. So you know to have a hundred pound giveaway, um, it's pretty awesome. So it'd be nice to give something back to uh, my subscribers for all their support and everything. And I do get a lot of support on my channel, some fantastic comments and you know loads of likes and shares and stuff and great feedback. So it's nice to be able to, to give something back. Right, that's that one. There are just five guys in this unit, so it'll be four missile launchers and the pack leader. My nose has been a bit funny this morning, actually. I did sometimes I would wake up and I've got my like a runny nose. No reason. I don't think it's hay fever. Just got a sensitive nose, I think. Any sort of dust or very strong perfume does it to me as well, especially old lady perfume, as I call it. You know, if I, if I walk past an old lady and she's got this really horrible smelly perfume on, it messes my nose up for the whole day. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the park later and my daughter that's probably when I'm going to record the mini war zone uh, video entry on the way to the park I think kill two beds with one stone ok that's them done uh, blow my nose, excuse the noise I might edit it out, I don't know <laughs> See how that sounded on the camera. <laughs> right, coffee. Okay, so now we'll take them on the base. Um, I'm going to drill out a few holes, I think. Yes, I am sweeping all this on the floor, but it's okay because I still have to hoover up. Right, let's get my pin vice out. So, one. So, let's have a look, what have we got to drill? We've got to drill this little bolt gun. So I need a small drill for that. So these videos of mine, now these are build-alongs, seem to go quite down quite well. I mean, I know everyone doesn't watch them because, well, you know, everyone has a time and inclination to watch them, but people that do seem to enjoy them. Uh, so I hope there's... Uh, it's so a good video for you to have on in the background while you're doing your work. Okay, so let's uh, drill out this gun barrel. So I'm going to start off the side section because it's already got a little hole. Obviously I made these models, as I said, a long time ago. I didn't know about drilling out gun barrels, uh, but it does make such a big difference. Really finishes off those guns. So I'm going to do the front one. Obviously, you've got to make sure you're central. That's what I'm doing at the moment. So I just take my time. Excellent. Right, <clears throat> so look, there's no other holes to drill out apart from in the feet. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So just find the best place to put the pin. This is going to be for the pin. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got the drill out with this small drill. So I need to exchange it for a big one in a minute. But what I've got this big small drill out, I'm going to just drill out these pin holes. I usually make these videos about an hour long, but um, I'm just going to make this video basically until I've finished doing what I'm doing, because I'm not sure how long this is going to take me. I'd imagine it won't take me um, an hour. That's nice and deep. So this one, he's only on that front ball of his foot there. 
but even so there's a quite a nice area where I can actually drill just going to make sure I drill into the right section so I'm just trying to work out when I'm going to play my uh, Dark Eldar because obviously I've now finished it and I really want to play it um, I usually game on Friday nights which is tonight um, but I've got the tournament tomorrow like I said so I'm going to be playing three games tomorrow and then another two the next day just making sure I've got the good depth so <clears throat> which one did I do that one that one yeah so I don't know that I want to have a massive game tonight um, if my, see what my buddy does because sometimes he phones up and he goes um, oh yeah, so and so wants to play as well. Shall we do some attack wing? So we end up playing attack wing, which is what we did last week, um, which is quite handy because there's a load of gardening last week as well. So I didn't really feel like playing it, but it does mean now I haven't played for a couple of weeks. Um, and then I've got this tournament tomorrow, but I don't think that's going to be. That's not going to be an issue. I'm, I'm very familiar with the game. It's not like I'm unfamiliar with it. Um, but yeah, if he wants to play. Um, 40k I might suggest some smaller games so maybe 500 point games just get a couple of those in and then I can play with Dark Eldar as well because you still got to get all the train out and stuff I was, obviously if you go to a, a club or something you know it's probably a bit easier but when you're playing at home you've still got to set the board out up and get all the train out and stuff uh, I'm going to try and go to bed early tonight because actually it's quite an early start tomorrow so I'm going to try and record it as much as I can <coughs> uh, Ace Face was going to stay around my house um, tomorrow night but he's got a slight change of plan because he's got uh, his wife's got some relatives that live fairly local to me so I think they're going to go there basically uh, but I'll try and get some footage of uh, Ace face as well on the on the video. I was thinking of just doing like a little vlog. And maybe I'll just get up in the morning and then just do like an opening video and then do one maybe in in the car. Have a chat with Ace in the car, you know, about the event and stuff, about the armies and things. Um, and then at the event, I honestly can't see me actually videoing. I think I'm going to be too. Uh, just concentrating on everything else that's going on um, but I think I will try at least when the armies are lined up for painting no matter what, we've got to go around and and do our like players judge of the armies I'll probably end up just taking pictures then of the armies and we'll see we'll see how it goes I don't, definitely don't see me doing any battle reports or anything I want to keep my head clear just for the games I suppose right last man for his feet so I get quite a few questions about this what I'm actually doing um, about pinning the, the feet but yeah basically you just drill a hole in good super glue paper clip in easy just makes it easier for painting and Actually, on uh, because I've taken them off the base, um, it will also, you know, leave a little bit more room for the, the brush to go in, and that's what I've got to do after this is assess um, how much I've got to break off to be able to paint them. So, what else? Um, yeah, yeah, I had a shave yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it was getting annoying in the bed. It was itchy. Oh, gone through his leg there. Went in a bit deep. So I, it's only the white. It's only like the white plastic as it's starting to break through, but hasn't actually broken through. And in actual fact, what I'm going to do is stick a bit of battle damage in there because there you go. We have battle damage on there anyway. So right. So that's them two done. No, not two. Five. <laughs> so now I'm going to swap out and I'm going to get my big drill. When I say big, two two millimeter drill. Um, 
Now, what was I saying? Can't even remember what I was talking about. Not a clue. Yeah. Can't actually remember what I was talking about. Oh well. So, um, I had that issue with my tooth. It's all sorted now. Um, obviously, it's still a bit uh, tender on the gum if I eat. Um, I'm gradually starting to eat on it now. So that's good. Right, so I've got um, the missile launchers. Which ones? These Chaos ones. Uh, they need drilling out at the front there, so that's what I'm going to do next. Again, going to find the middle. Now these are metal ones, so slightly harder work, but just a case of just gently drilling them through. Oh yeah, I was talking about my beard, wasn't I? So yeah, I shaved that off. It was getting really itchy, um, annoying. Like every time I ate, um, like tomato sauce and God knows what else went in it. <laughs> and I thought, if I'm going to the tournament and eating in public, um, and then <laughs> like make a mess and stuff, and I'm just not used to it. And to be fair, it was fun. It was fun growing it, but. I only grew it because the wife wasn't here and she hates beards and stubble anyway so it was like an opportunity for me not to have to shave. And what I've noticed, because this is, normally I do this in a different area, these little videos, but what I'm noticing is the laptop's like moving all over the place as I'm drilling out so hopefully the footage isn't too bad for you but let's face it you're probably not watching anyway, you're probably just listening while you're um, doing your hobby. So I was watching uh, Chief Live Gaming's uh, video, um, his update video on his new house, because he's got a new house and indeed he's got like a new hobby room if you want to call it that, it's like a massive place, it's in his basement um, and wow it looks fantastic, he's got a massive table, 8x4 uh, table, how awesome is that, um, and then He's got a um, massive area to do his hobby display cases. It just looks absolutely awesome. And I'd love to have something like that. I and mean, at the moment, I'm just around the house. One day, maybe when the kids, when we don't have kids living with us, if that ever happens, because it's so difficult to get onto the house market these days. Um, but um, yeah, one day, I hope to have a, a man cave. A, a hobby room all to myself but not at the moment that's not going to happen so like I said this uh, does take a bit longer especially with this uh, manual pin vice but just take my time so I was chatting to Ace um, about the tournament saying um, you know that I'm basically ready. I showed him my army because I had my army on my display board, and um, he was saying, "Well, things to bear in mind are, uh, uh, what would you do if you faced wraith knights, if you faced centurions, um, if you faced um, what else was it he was talking about? Death stars. Uh, oh yeah, reptides. Riptides. He said, "What happens if you face five riptides?" don't know if you can have five riptides because you're not allowed four four of a kind is the maximum but I suppose if they're different riptides then that would be different so because there's loads of different riptides isn't there but anyway um, so I had to think about that and just like well ultimately I'm gonna play my army and I'm gonna play the mission um, so I know my army well I'm pretty familiar with the missions, although not so much the Maelstrom missions, because I don't play them so much. But I think that's an advantage. I think, the, the for me, the Maelstrom missions are um, quite random. Um, and there's two Maelstrom missions that we're playing. We're play, playing Deadlock, which is the one that I played 
against Black Toad Studios where you start with a lot of cards and they get less and less as you go along. Um, and then the other one is Escalation where you start with one card and you get more cards as you go along. Now, for me, it seems <laughs> that both of those missions are pretty much down to the luck of the cards. I mean, yes, okay, you get like you can be tabled and stuff, but you know if you get some good cards at the beginning or some good cards at the end, it's going to make or break how many points you get. Let's see if that's deep enough or not. It's pretty deep. I'll go in a little bit more. Um, so that's those two. Now the Eternal War missions we're playing. Crusade, I think it's the first game, so it's going to be the maximum objectives, which is five. And then the next one is going to be a homebrewed mission, but it's basically six objectives, and each objective has the, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, mysterious objective one where it explodes on a, on a roll of a one. So basically six objectives. And then the last mission is kill points. Now I'm very familiar with playing those three missions and for me the Maelstrom missions are going to be pretty simple because it's going to be all about the cards, whatever cards you get. You know, I'll play, play the cards basically. If I get a good card, great. If I get bad cards, well, not a lot you can do about it. So being very, very familiar with the objective missions, I think, will be an advantage. Now, if I'd played Maelstrom missions all the time, um, as opposed to playing Eternal War missions all the time, I think I'd be at a disadvantage when it came to the Eternal War missions. So, I'm feeling quite confident about the missions, even though there's two Maelstrom missions, which I don't normally play. Um, I think I can, I can cope with those missions quite well, so... Yeah, the missions aren't, aren't bothering me. Actually, I quite like the missions because they're, they're pretty much just standard things. Now, there are a lot of um, other things that you can get points for. There's like 10 extra points for achieving different things. There's some in there which I know I'm not going to do. It's like there's a extra point if your Warlord slays another Warlord during any of the games. Well, I doubt that's going to happen because uh, my Warlord's being very... Uh, Passive, you know, in the back, basically, uh, not very aggressive. So there's some of those points I won't get, but then there's quite a few I think I will get. Um, there's one in there you've got to get twice as many objectives as your opponent at any point. I think I'll definitely achieve that one, for example. So this one, this chaos gun already had a dip, so I don't think it's going to take so much work on this one. But we'll see. I'm, an, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I, bet, I bet you anything that I'll draw Ace Face at some point to play him. Probably the first game. <laughs> How uncanny would that be? But I, I'm on Ace Face, as I say, is taking Ad Admech. So if I do draw Ace, that could be a challenge because I'm not going to really know his army very well. Okay, so that is all the drilling done. So next, I need to find out if I can paint them um, as they are. So I'm going to have a good close look at these. See if I can get in. I think I can get into all of that. The chest plate area is usually the, the hardest. Especially this gold area. And that's pretty open. I think if I can take one arm off I'll be able to paint the rest. And the obvious one is to take the metal arm off. And the reason why I say that is because the plastic one I would have definitely used plastic glue which means they would have melted together which means it would be very difficult to get that off. The metal one I would have um, um, super glued it so it's going to be difficult. Now what I do is, before I um, take it off, is I take a picture. I'm just looking for my phone, which I don't have. I'm going to grab my phone. Okay, so i got my phone. I'm going to take a picture. 
and the reason for this is so that I know exactly how it is when I have to glue it back together right there's a picture of that one I'm going to take a picture of all of these now just in case I do have to, to mess them up and such that one So I've got pictures of them all now, it's useful. <clears throat> so yeah, this one, I'm going to take that metal arm off, I think, because that will just be easier for painting. So this is going to be a bit of a task, but hopefully it should basically just rip off. Now what you need to do is make sure you're holding nothing, which is very vulnerable to bending or breaking, so I can hold all that area. There is this wolf pelt on the bottom, so I'm going to avoid touching that, although it is loose anyway, so I'm going to have to sort that out. Uh, but I don't want it to break. So I reckon a bit of pressure there, and it should come off. There you go. Uh, useful that I didn't pin them. <laughs> uh, as I said, I made these such a long time ago, I, I never pinned them. So we know exactly how it's going to go. We've got the picture. And the fact that it's got glue on there also is a good indication. So it's going to go on there like that. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this as well because I don't want it coming off in the future. So what I actually need is my small pin vise. Back out again. So I'm still waiting to see the new Star Trek film. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling to get a babysitter. The thing is, I'm I'm using. Um, all my babysitters for when I'm at work, uh, basically my mum and my eldest daughter, um, and it's just not going to be fair for me to say, well, yeah, you, you know, because my mum's quite old now, and, um, you know, I don't want to put it on her to, to have to babysit outside when anything is absolutely necessary, so I'm going to have to wait to see it, unfortunately, but there you go, it's life. Been told it's quite good though from people I've, that have seen it. So that's that. And now I'm going to get this picture back up just to make sure I get it in the right angle. Okay, so his hand is at the bottom. Like that, yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna be able to go too deep with this because it's uh, not that it's not that thick. This gun actually, but you know, a little little pen is better than no pen, so. Sometimes it's really difficult to talk whilst you're actually <clears throat> doing any modelling, especially tricky stuff. So I was watching, uh, who's I watching? Oh yeah, Palmer from um, Heresy Productions. He's probably not going to watch this video because I think he's on holiday. But um, 
yeah, he does his Q and A, his Inquisitor videos, and he said that he likes to to model while he does his questions. Um, only basic stuff like base coating and stuff, and nothing too intricate. Um, but even so, I, I just don't think I could actually do that because uh, it's concentrating on those questions and what thinking about answers plus doing modelling is really difficult. Right, so that's that one. Let's put that aside for a minute. Right, next one. Let's go keep the metal. Let's do the chaos ones first. So, that is going to be tricky to get into there. Oh, he's got a head and everything. So, I'm definitely going to take off the gun once again. So let's have a, a look. This looks like his hand's quite heavily glued to it, so it'll be interesting to see how this breaks off. Let's have a go. Wouldn't surprise me if the backpack and everything else came off as well. Got a bit right, so that's his hand off. There it goes coming. Yeah, that's his arm off. I thought that would happen. Alright, oh, let's stop there now. I can actually paint, I know, see his head's all in the way, so I can't really paint that piece. So, uh, now, have I pinned this one? Because it looks like it's on a pin. I have. Wow. I did know about pinning in those days then. Well, that's a big pin. <laughs> Okay, well that's handy, because that's already pinned that one, so that's quite useful now. So I can just push that in. Excellent. Right, so that's that one. Just there. So let's put that aside. Clean up that, it's a bit of green stuff that I put in the join. Just needs cleaning. My green stuff work in those days was okay, but nothing special. Alright, so that's that one. That's the two metal arms done. Ah, on his hand. Let's have a look. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I can leave that off as well, that's going to make it easier to paint, so that's, I'm quite happy with that. Right, next one. And that's impossible to paint anything underneath there, so that's definitely got to come off. Now he has a metal arm, so I'm thinking that's probably the best bit to take off. So let's have a go and see if we can do that. Oh, there's a little sword which makes it a bit awkward. Can't actually get my fingers in this one. Uh, tool time. Right, what we got? Tool I can never find. I mean, there we go. Green stuff, shaper tool, because it's slightly shorter than all the paint brushes. So when it sits in there, can't see it. Okay, so well, I've got a bit of plastic off, which is surprising, but hey ho, and. That's a beautiful fit, actually. Now, can I get in without taking the other arm off? That's going to be black. Little edge highlight. Paint the sword on both sides. 
in, in there. Yeah, I reckon I can. So I'm going to leave that. So it's just this missile launcher. Doesn't need cleaning up. Let's have a look. So it's going to be there. This hand fits on there perfectly. Right. I would say no. There is a little bit of super glue which I'm just going to take off. Yeah. that one and this one pack leader I can paint him up no problem at all and the last one again I have to take this missile launcher arm off I think let's hope this one comes off as easy as the other one yeah I know why these are coming off easy because this arm is one whole piece. It's not actually an arm holding the missile launcher. It's like a whole piece of plastic. And that's why it's coming off easy. So what's that one? Perfect. Right. So we've now got those all off. Uh, so now I'm going to pin them. So that's that one there. <coughs> this one. It's already pinned. I'm not going to pin the, the plastic ones because I'm just going to, that'd be absolutely fine just to glue back on. Okay, so they're all fine. So let's pin these on. Right, so I've drilled out the hole. So now we need <coughs> some paper clips, which got here. Okay, so need some more paper clips. Make a little pin and we're gonna super glue the pin in. I'm gonna super glue it into the arm on this one, well into the body, sorry. So let's have some super glue. Where are you? Super glue. There we go. Now I've got this new super glue I'm trying actually because um, usually I use the Wilkinson's own super glue which I find absolutely fantastic. Now I used to use the GW super glue um, but I didn't get on with that very well at all, it just kept going off you know, before I'd finished using it and then I used this um, Wilkinson's super glue, it was about £4 for a big bottle similar to this one um, and it's absolutely fantastic it bonded really well didn't go off I got good use out of the whole tub um, but when I went to buy that they'd sold out so I've got this um, Gorilla glue which was like £4.25 you get the same amount as the Wilkinson's one I think I've seen that brand before around so I think it's pretty decent but we'll see right so now I'm just going to cut this down I know I haven't got that much depth in the arm, so I just uh, get it to the right depth. Seems about right to me. Yeah, it's not quite. 
white there needs to be slightly shorter. Ah, there you go. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit more around that so it dribbles into the hole a bit more. A bit more sort of jelly. It doesn't say it's a gel glue, but it's it's quite jelly and such. I'll just get a bit of tissue. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe a bit of that surplus glue off. Okay, so that's that one. That one's already pinned there and this side I'm not going to have a pin what I'll eventually do is put some green stuff in there so that's that um, and then I'm not going to pin that one or that one I think don't need to pin that do I think I will um, because I know what will happen when this video goes out everyone will say oh you should have pinned it so I will <laughs> okay so what's that and Did I've drilled right the way through that shoulder pad because I'm going to do a pretty cool billet hole in there. I've got to go in and battle damage all these up anyway, so do a bit now. Right, that's that. Right, uh, so a little pin for this guy. Just dry fit it first. up a little bit more. Quite a lot of super glue on here I think where I glued it the first time. There we go. Right. Uh, super glue. That's that one, and then this one, put the lid on, okay, I might as well pin it, I'm here with the pin by, so why not? This one I'm not going to go through because I don't want a bit of holes on both the shoulder pads it's not in the same place. Yeah. Not going quite 
that's deep. Like so. And just right, another paper clip. too long. Okay, that's that one. Um, right, next I am going to do the pins in their feet. So you want some nice big paper clips now. So I want to have this long section in the paper clip. Now I must admit my paper clips here are getting a bit low. So I might have to get some more. It's a bit annoying, so I seem to have run out on the camera. <laughs> oh well, let's have a look. There's another bit. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's two. Uh, yeah, I've only got two. <laughs> I've got paper clips there, but they're all quite small. And because I'm going to be putting these into the corks, I want the paper clips and the legs to be quite long, ideally. So I'll do one, and then I'll have to come back and do the rest when I get some more paper clips. So that's that, and that to make it as long as I can get it. I'm going to glue these into the, the feet. So, just take some of that surplus glue on the rod and then push it in. And then on the other one. And these will end up being the pins for the feet into the bases too. So we can bend these if we need to afterwards to get them into the, the cork and stuff. But basically, you know, put that in and just leave that to dry, um, which is what I need to do for the rest of the feet. So I'm going to do that. Now the other thing I want to do is sort out this here, uh, the little wolf pouch I'm talking about. Now that's very simple to do. Just pop some super glue on the join, and that will go hard and stiffen up that pelt quite easily. Or at least with my normal super glue. I don't know about this stuff, it's quite jelly this stuff. Um, just sort of wipe the surplus off so it doesn't destroy any of the detail. There's not much detail here. Right. Let that dry because that should sort that out. Um, anything else to do? No, that's it basically. So the only thing left to do is basically put pins in uh, the rest of the models once I get some bigger paper clips and um, I'm ready to prime them up and get painting. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, I say I'm ready. I am going to do some battle damage. Uh, so extra battle damage. Some screaming in their car. Um, which I'm going to do on some of their feet and 
areas. Um, but I sometimes add that as I'm painting it, which I know sounds a bit weird, but um, it's quite nice being able to paint stuff and then, for example, if I'm blending the grey um, and the blend doesn't quite work out as nicely as I would like it, I can just cover that up by adding some battle damage, um, just taking a chip of plastic out and then just like paint it back in with the base coat and do a couple of washes and then it's all covered. So I'm quite happy to do the battle damage as I go along. It's also good to lay down the, the colours to see where all the colours are going before I start doing the battle damage. Because uh, there's some stuff like, I don't like doing battle damage on the pink areas if I can help it that much. Um, I've got some pink areas battle damage but not much. So um, I will add some more battle damage at the end. Um, I might go in and do a bit more just before I prime them, um, but we'll see. So, that is it for this video. Um, yeah, let me just bring the camera up. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, the little chat um, that I did, which I didn't really chat about that much, it's more just doing the, the hobby, but there you go. Um, so that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.